Hello everyone. This is Krishna here. And today we are going to talk on topic called cancer detection using deep learning. So this is our objective. We will first talk about what is deep learning. Then we will understand how do you actually see deep learning things and how do you process the image. Then we will understand how do you actually do some brain tumor detection using deep learning. And we will understand about transfer learning to some extent and CNN architecture also we will see to some extent. Now what is deep learning? So deep learning is all based on how deeply you are learning about that particular subject when it is deep it is actually based on you know how much deep is that multiple layers that is why the name deep learning actually if you see if you consider this this is like a three layer circle and this is your ai ai is artificial intelligence that's the study of making computers think like humans in the ai you have something called machine learning Machine learning is all about a set of algorithms that help you to understand patterns in the data as well as predict unseen things also from the data. And in machine learning, one of these subset is deep learning. The other name for it is deep neural networks also because it tries to mimic exactly like what our brain neuron cells think like. And why the name they have put deep learning is if you look at any deep learning algorithm, any one of it, all deep learning algorithms, if you see, they will, will be like this. You will have some set of input layers. You will have some set of hidden layers you will have some set of output layers and each of these layers most of the time if you see they get connected to all this it is like a graph architecture kind of if you have learned about graph theory it is more like that it's like a fully connected network like this it will be okay so this is how they look like that means every other layer has connection to that other layer kind of thing and this you are seeing these are nothing called Pure technical terms if you want to talk about these are nothing but some mathematical processing happens here or you can call it as some particular layering functions and these layers will be multiple of them you can have one layer two layer three layer, doesn't matter but all that is each of the layer is responsible for studying one particular feature so that's the whole job of it since the study happens so deeply that there are multiple layers studying it that's why the name deep learning it is all because of how deep it learns so any of the deep learning algorithm if you look at there are three things you will see commonly one is input layer another is hidden layers and third is output layer okay so this is your input layer if you consider these are hidden layers where the actual job of identifying the font of a featuring feature engineering happens and this is where your output layer comes now why first of all we need to go to deep learning when ml is there is ml have this challenge that when it comes to feature extraction to some extent ml can do but not as precisely as the deep learning algorithms are and deep learning algorithm excels very much in identifying features when i say features given an image of yours and given an image of me it is very capable of identifying who is what if you train it properly so that kind of things it can do because it is very successful in doing all those things that means in the future feature engineering or feature extraction deep learning really works well and most of the application related to computer vision and all this feature extraction or feature in feature engineering or understanding feature is very very important like if you give your thumbprint it should be able to uniquely identify whether it's some your thumbprint or somebody's thumbprint all that related to how exactly you identify the features and that's where this guy excels that's why you see these days a lot of these trainings also we have on the deep learning because this excels on a lot of things in the real world where we want to solve the problems it could be starting with image processing or detecting my emotions like you went to a shop how do i know customers are really liking whatever i have put the products i have put in the uh, you know my store i can't ask each and every salesman to monitor it right i can put some video cameras and from video cameras i can capture their emotions uh, their you know whatever they are looking at the product how they feel how they excite when they look at a product and all and i can capture and start reading and process the information and i see the based on the emotion i can understand whether they really like my products or not all that so there are a lot of uh, you know innovations we can do based on that so one thing you have to understand is when machine learning is there why deep learning is come is one main reason is feature extraction or feature engineering okay that's the main thing there are other reasons also but this is the one which mainly you know contributes to it i mean the same stuff will be there but in a different form i have just put it in an easy way now like i said this is what i was saying you look at any deep learning algorithm these three will be there there will be input layer hidden layer output layer so at a high level if you look at input layer if you look at you let's say there are two images passed it's a dog image and cat image the input image once you once it goes to this input these of these are called neurons 
pure technical terms they are nothing but some kind of mathematical function which does some kind of computation each of these particular functions once they read the image they actually convert that image into set of matrices because for us it is image for computer do you know how it looks for an image for computer when you say image it is nothing but numbers computer understands your images based on numbers only that's where your numpy and other other algorithms really excels so for computer understand always that it is just the numbers part so if you see if i take a image of 120 by 120 every image internally gets converted again this 120 gets multiplied by 3 again if you want to represent in red green blue colors because any any image can be represented in red and green and blue right so this 120 by 120 is the image size and this image size further gets multiplied by 3 and this gets converted to proper set of numbers where each of those numbers are called as pixels will represent the intensity of the image contrast of the image different things so this will be converted to like a big matrix it is like a three dimensional matrix if you look at right so that is how it converts and each of these three channels here if you look at so one one channel for red another channel for green another channel for blue that's how it looks at now deep learning general intuition so what does it mean is yes, how it actually got influenced like i said it's heavily influenced based on our brain neuron cells that's why the name neural networks also sometimes like there is a visual cortex in our brain if you really study about the background of these neural networks the visual cortex in your brain actually is responsible for understanding you know certain features when you look at an image when you look at an image generally what happens is each of these in the neuron cells are responsible for one activity one one, one guy might be one neuron might be responsible for you know sensing the smell another neuron might be uh, responsible for looking at an image and perceiving something another guy might be responsible for looking at the environment each neuron is capable of that so it is completely based on you know your signs where from there this is heavily influenced and with that the architecture actually started okay so it is all like input you pass there will be a set of neurons which is nothing but our mathematical function when you write a program and it transfers to different output signals so here one example could be let's say you are passing set of numbers to a computer and it should be able to understand so it is like if you call it as a one two and n numbers each one based on the output signal whichever it gets activated like i said it is heavily influenced by our brain neural cells like let's say if there is a neuron cell that is responsible for looking at an image in our brain there are millions of neuron cells but when they look at an image or even look at a picture only that neuron gets activated similarly here also when you pass multiple layers there will be one layer out of all these output layers that will get activated based on what is your input signal is that is how it works so this is what i was talking about any of the neural network you will have something like this you have set of inputs and in turn when you pass to the algorithm it automatically calculate the weights Actually, the weights is nothing but you can consider like a matrices, which are set of random numbers. Initially, most of the some of the algorithms, what they do is they put some random numbers or zero values, and those weights will be adjusted when they train internally. And inside that, like I said, there will be a bunch of mathematical function and activation function. So you hear this term activation function now and then in deep learning. Basically, activation function, what it does is, like I said, every image is represented as a matrix. Once that matrix passes to these layers, when it goes to this activation layer, the main job of activation layer is if there is negative value it actually converts that into a zero if any of the negative value it puts a zero if there is more than zero values are there like greater than zero values are there it just keeps it as it is that is what majorly do okay that's what the main activation function will do actually here it is saying one actually it will not be one actually so this is uh, something we need to correct so like i said there could be multiple layers this is like a general architecture where you have one set of input layers there are multiple hidden layers and there is an output layer coming in this is basically for a artificial neural network ann this is one of the neural network algorithm or a deep learning algorithm currently we have and it has its own problem like it might be very good at uh, you know certain um, uh, identifying feature extraction but when it comes to a lot of features extraction if you look at it is not able to exactly identify that that's why you will get on cnn which is like very powerful in identifying the images and all that so it has its own pros and cons based on how it actually detects the features now image processing using dll still now what we learned is just uh, fundamentals of how things work cnn stands for coral uh, sorry convolution neural networks now one problem with ann the earlier algorithm artificial neural networks is 
if you see here, let's say if you pass ANN, ANN not only understands the image, but also it remembers in which position it is there. So it is like position biased. Let's say your image is not here. If your image is here, so it thinks that that is not correct and it might not give you right predictions. That's a problem because it biases more towards position and that might not be the case, right? Sometimes your image can be like that. Sometimes the same image can move to the upward right or upward left there. If it is not able to identify, it is very difficult. But actually ANN algorithm is designed in such a way that is more of a position biased. That's where we get CNN where it exactly understand the features from the shape rather than understanding where it is exactly located. So that location bias will not be there in, in terms of CNN. That's why people prefer CNN algorithm. So the CNN looks like this. Actually CNN also have this input layer, hidden layer and output layer. If you talk about input layer, so this is where your input layer comes. And after that it passes to multiple convolution layer. Convolution layers are nothing but hidden layers. And you finally your output layer. And each convolution layer will further have pooling layer and sometimes you have padding layer also and then fully connected. So convolution layer you can understand like convolution layer also you have set of neurons but you can understand like given an image. Let's say there is an image a simple example if you see this flight how the flight shape some the shape something like like this and then the shape this is shape sorry the shape shape is like this then its shape is like this then it has some shape right there is a shape to it so each of the neurons in the convolution layer were responsible in understanding one one feature one fe one neuron might be understanding this feature another neuron might be understanding this another neuron might be understanding this like they construct bunch of feature maps all these boxes you are seeing these ones these are feature maps gets from each convolution layer and they further pass to another convolution layer so finally when they finally get to this fully connected and gets to output they will have more you know insights on what actually the image is about and here if you are looking at pooling there is one more thing so what this pooling will do is when i say each of these neurons are responsible for detecting features after detecting the features they actually pass to something called pooling which is called sometimes called max pooling where the job of max pooling is identify the maximum value from a given matrix and it strides there's a you know you can give a stride of two or three based on that it just moves from one set of matrix to another and keeps getting the maximum value it is to string the matrix size so that you can process the data faster because convolution layer generally takes more time that is one of the biggest code of the cnns where it takes a lot of time to train the data even for the cancer detection algorithm to train my algorithm it took me three and a half or close to four hours so it takes a lot of time that's the biggest problem but once it trained it can predict data very good Okay, then you have activation layer which already I talked about there are multiple activation layer ReLU is one like that So these guys job mainly is if there is any negative value put them as zero if there is any greater than or equal to zero, Greater than zero value just keep it as it is Okay, and finally it comes to fully connected layer where it combines all the layers and send to output And there is one more thing also will be there which is called flattening where when you get a set of matrices a three by three or four by four Finally, they gets converted into a one-dimensional matrix. That is what the flattening will do and further it will go to the output layer so it is all like when you are creating cnn like i said it is all matrices right so what kind of matrices you want you want a one dimensional two dimensional or three dimensional that's what the con 1d 2d 3d represents now once this so the way happen here happens in the cnn internally is it actually do some kind of template matching it actually do some kind of based on the data you are given it do some kind of probability and all that and puts an image on the structure and tries to see if it is matching or not so it is a lot like convolution layer like i said here we are talking about each individual components of cnn so like i said convolution layer it is actually looks at entire matrix which is nothing but your image and from that image it gets the feature maps feature maps is nothing but each of the maps is responsible for one feature one feature might be responsible for understanding curve in the image another feature might be responsible for understanding straight lane another feature might be understanding for uh, getting a circle shape each one will be responsible for one shape okay so max pool so max pool is just getting a cap maximum value from each of it so you see seven three eight seven what is the maximum value eight and that's what comes here Similarly, 5216, what is the maximum value? 6, and that comes here. 4908, what is the maximum value? 9, and 3945, 9. So the max pool layer job is once you give a set of matrix, identify the maximum value from it. So that it is actually the main job of one of the job of max pooling layer is because when you pass lot of matrices like that, your program also has to work a lot, right? 
in order to reduce it it will go to the max pool layer so the maximum value it identifies so that the image is also you know image will keep it like that but it will get the highest contrast uh, highest value out of that so that it can obtain a lot of information about it at the same time the matrix size also get reduced it is like you are reducing the dimensions of the, your feature maps that's what it is happens here now this is like i said sometimes padding padding is like you add some pixels sometime apart from what is given sometimes for the feature map you need to add some kind of padding cells and all that is what happens here and this is the last step which is called flattening like i said now overall convolution layer looks like this you have input let's say the number 2 is there and it passes to multiple convolution layer where internally it has this max pooling also and finally it goes to flattening and like you see here only one of the neuron gets activated it could be 0 1 and all so based on where the activate where the you know probability of getting a zero is there it will say that based on this it will come like this these are different output signals we'll talk about this maybe after the session transfer learning so transfer learning is something it is still in research i mean it is not something very matured like your deep learning transfer learning concept is simple like for example let's say you learn something based on that if you are able to apply the same learning to a different thing that's called transfer learning like for example let's say uh, i am very good in um, for example operating system using that operating system knowledge if i am able to understand networking concepts based on that or most of it most of the operating system knowledge i am able to apply on networking or okay uh, let me give you a very simple example maybe the other one i was stating is not right like let's say i am a very hardcore c programmer and believe me because i am very good in c programming for me it took just one month to learn python that means i am applying my knowledge of logic everything whatever i have learned in c to the same thing in python to understand what is the difference here and there what is the good parts of python what is the bad parts of python so it just took me one month to do it if i was not good at c what would happen is i have to learn python for at least 3 4 months to understand in the language but here i was able to understand in just one month and that's also pretty quick now why how i was able to understand because my knowledge of c is very good that i know most of the concepts and i am able to apply that's called your transfer learning transfer learning concept is simple if you have trained your algorithm on any data set let's say on the cars data set you already trained your algorithm so that it can detect any car if you are able to apply the same algorithmic knowledge whatever you went out of it and apply on a different automobile let's say truck or van that is called transfer learning now that means you are applying the learning you have done from one particular data set which is about a different thing altogether to a related one like here car truck both are automobiles or car van they are also automobiles car auto something like that that's the main theme around it it's still in research it's not very matured it's not very uh, you know but this is something which is trending and you see these days you will see one by one there will be a lot of research also happening and you will see a lot of phd scholars started picking this subject this is like uh, the current trend at least in the deep learning everybody if you see deep learning these days people are talking about it and like i said your machine learning program your data set and it gets some knowledge from the first model where you train from scratch and you can apply that in a different use case altogether but a related one like here if it is car you can apply it in a truck or a van something like that that's the main thing around it now we already saw that in the cnn components the same thing there is a convolution layer internally there will be a pooling layer and there will be a sampling and finally there will be a fully connected layer and output layer so the same thing it is like from image how it flows through these are convolution layer these are brb black red black uh, brb1 brb2 and all blue red black something like that and finally it goes to different predictors and it actually says what actually it is able to do it so let me show you quickly a program i have so what i did is i actually downloaded 2 gb Uh, it's like it download itself took me half i think one hour something a 2 gb image i downloaded this is about uh, a tumor detection kind of thing and each of that i have downloaded you can download from kegel also i downloaded just from this kegel and you need to have at least 2 gb in your minimum 2 gb it is expectation here so it takes at least one hour for you if your computer is very slow uh, you know it will take even 3 hours once it downloads you know you have to just extract it because it gets the zip file then you need to download all these algorithms okay and once you download it and uh, you know i'm just getting only the png files from here and once you get the png file 
I'm just putting my algorithm to detect whether it is a can no cancer or cancer and what I am doing here is I am getting all the images based on whatever images you give I'm constructing an array because like I said for computer it is all image means on the matrices so you have to somebody has to convert right that's what happens here can you share Kegel link to this yes I can share that so you can find multiple things in Kegel for this let me Huh, these are the ones I picked it is like 2 GB something see this is like very big data So you can download from here So one command you can do is uh, Like for example, there is something called model dot summary once the model is trained So I train my model here and you can see I train for 20 epochs each epoch It tells me what is the accuracy and this one you see each step each epoch take 383 seconds 383 seconds is you have 60 seconds is one minute, right? So it is close to you know uh, at least when I calculated it is was taking something around 10 minutes for each step So overall it took me something around four hours or three and a half hours something like that But if you see the accuracy level of Identifying the features improved over a period of time. This is what you need to look at it started with 0.87 and finally when the 20 epochs are finished it is able to predict 0 0.99 percentage and even I put the you know my test data as well as training data generally for any machine learning them algorithm what we do is we actually break the uh, available data into two parts you will take 80 percent of the data for training and 20 percent you will keep it for validation which is nothing but test data so that you can validate whether it is good or not so here on the same plot i have observed that when i applied a plot it can easily saying that it started from something around 89 if you look at y-axis and it's slowly close to one which is 99 something i showed you right this one it is able to my on my training data it is able to identify up to 99 percentage 99.8 percentage it was able to identify the correct data but when i'm applied on my test data if you see it was able to apply on something around 93 or 92 so i need to tweak it even more better so it reaches to that but this is how we train the model and sometimes when these kind of image processing is there it will take even much more time okay if I start executing this it will take another four hours. That's why I prepared all of that for you But this is how it looks like Okay, that's all from my side Thank you all guys. Bye